You're lucky to get in the back rest. She ain't gonna get none of it. So I stop in the local bar, you know, people. I go to the bar. I rent my coat. I call a bartender. I say, look, man, come down here. You got down there. So what you want? I want bourbon. I want scotch. We're getting into sans cassette mode. Yep. What is the state of boozing in Montreal? Let's get to the nitty gritty of the who, what, and where to get your drink on. And just the man to do it is Man About Town, Chris Hand, otherwise known as Zeke. He joins us now. Hi, Zeke. Howdy. How you doing? Great. How are you? Doing very, very well. Thank you. Where do you want to start? Do you want to start with what you brought in? Yes. Let's I'd say start the, with the drink. Yes. The, the, the Martinez. The Martinez. the Martinez. What's a Martinez? A, a Martinez is a, uh, it's a variation on a Manhattan that then slowly over the past, what would be 150 years, became the Martini. Okay. So you have your basic Manhattan, which is uh, sweet vermouth, uh, whiskey, uh, some bitters, and... Uh, that's it. Packs a punch. It packs a punch. Then you get the Martinez where you swap out the whiskey for gin. Ooh. And then it's the sort of thing where over time the proportions get to the point where in the, uh, what is it, the mid-70s or so, people are talking about how you just sort of wave at the vermouth bottle and it's sort of a mm-hmm. Martinez straight gin. Now it's coming back. But this is proportions of half and half of uh, white vermouth and gin. Then I put in a little bit of uh, Angostura bitters and a little bit of Curacao, and then I stuck it in a barrel for a month and a half. Barrel Yeah, wooden aged. barrel. Barrel aged so martinis. So oaked. Yes. Wow. Mm-hmm. Fellas, uh, raise your glass over there. All, all of us are chin-chin, everybody. It's, oh, what a job. It's 5 o'clock job. somewhere. Yeah. Having a sip of this. Mm-hmm. Should I be scared? Is this going to hurt? No, no, not at all. Smooth. Woo! It hurt a little bit. That's nice. It hurt a little bit. What do you oh, think of that, on. guys? I like that. Some hair on your chest. I don't need hair on my chest. Thank you so much. But I, I, I kind of need a little another sip of this. What do you think, fellas? Uh, very nice. Yeah. yeah, it's very, very nice. Yeah, very, very nice. I'm glad you all like yeah. it. Yeah, nice I, bouquet. It's uh like a summer. It's got a sort of summery thing. It actually, it could go summer or winter because there's mm-hmm. a little burn yeah. afterwards that warms you up. But uh, then f- you forgot fall and spring as well. <laughs> yes, right. Yeah. Any season, yeah. any hour yeah. of the day yeah. is good. So, so what? So spring bars are getting into spring mode basically. Yes, got new the, drink the, menus coming out. New, new drink menus coming out. The big thing though is uh, Invasion cocktail. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm, which is okay. sort of like uh, where you have your, uh, what is it, uh, poutine week, you have your grilled cheese week, you have your cocktail week. Your booze week. week. Your booze week, yes. And we're, uh, when you said invasion cocktail, I had to think for a moment because around here we've been calling it invasion cocktail. Okay. Much more. Uh, I'm, I'm much more of a square head invasion cocktail. Much more dramatic. So what is it all about? But, what uh, is... There it's a combination. You get your passport and there are a bunch of different bars all over town that have uh, special cocktails for the week. You get your passport stamped and you go around uh, which month, having a grand old time. There's also uh, what are called pro days. And that is if you're free during the day on uh, the 15th and the 16th, which is next, if I remember correctly, next Thursday and Friday. I don't know, but I believe you. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are a bunch of conferences that are happening with uh, what's called the ambassador from Saint Germain, which is an apéritif uh, that is was made in France. There's also uh, Simon Caporal, who won the 2014 Bartender of the Year. There is Niccolo Batterofano, who is uh, the brand ambassador for Trois Rivières Rum, and then Don Livermore, who is the master blender for uh, Corby Distilleries. And what? And they are going to be mixing drinks and talking and uh, the they're telling gonna, they're the tales talking, of the trade. Uh, t- talking and t- telling tales of the trade. Yes, it's the sort of thing where with Don Livermore, I've heard him speak before and he is the guy who actually chooses which barrels you use for the various Corby whiskeys and he's going to be explaining how he does it why he does it what the variations are and so on and so forth the other people I haven't seen them speak before but I imagine they're going to be as informative on their particular products as well barrels like I'm thinking about you with your barrel Mm -hmm. where do you get your hands on an oak barrel to just start making your own mixes Uh, there there are numerous places there the easiest way is um, with Les Subversives okay they're, they're this local distillery that's uh, out in uh, Saint-Jean, and uh, they have, because they're making whiskey, but in order for it to be Canadian whiskey, it's got to be aged for three years. Ah. And so what they've made, the distillate, and they will sell you a barrel and a gallon of their distillate that you then age yourself. And so that's how I got my first barrel. That's how I got my second barrel, and yes. <laughs> <laughs> and now he has no furniture in his apartment. It is just barrels of booze. <laughs> and yeah, that's the, the easiest. How much does a barrel set you back, though? Uh, there, this is... Uh, five liter barrel, which is uh, three point seven, not 
Yeah, uh, no, five liter, 3.79 liter barrel, one gallon. It'd yeah. Be the other way. And uh, they're roughly about, uh, what, $100. Oof, that's enough. Mm-hmm. So why? Why would you want to have your own barrel? Why not just go to the bar and get a drink that's already been mixed and cured for you? Why, uh, what's they would, the... they, you can't cure the drink at the bar. Right. It's the sort of thing that, yeah, this one waited a month in a barrel, and it tastes distinctly different, has a completely different color than um, what we... Um, what you would what uh, get when you to. yes, when you okay. if you did, made it made it mix. This is much much darker. So this is for people who are serious, who who are like serious, not even necessarily connoisseurs, but serious into their drink. And I'm thinking invasion cocktail, invasion cocktail mm-hmm. is basically a festival for boozers uh, or, 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 bar, or bartenders. <laughs> or, no, but you know what I mean. Mm-hmm, yes, booze artists. Ah, uh, yes, that would be another way to say it in one form or mm-hmm. another. But yes, yeah, speaking of uh, les subversifs, the sort of thing where is if you don't want to do your own aging just because that sounds sort of a little bit too intimidating, difficult. Intimidating, yeah. They have this thing called uh, this uh, tonic pack. Okay. Where you basically, you know, when you want your gin and tonic. Yeah. And if you buy those stuff from Canada Dry or Schweppes, it's got probably something like about 70,000 uh, grams of uh, sugar in it. Ah. This is a way where you use these little tea bags. Okay. Yeah, you I'm looking put at that, it. You put that into uh, water. You add however much sugar you want. And then you add that to your gin, add a little bit of club soda, and you have your own gin and tonic that is way, way better. How much is this catching on? Are people really getting into this? Oh, yes. No, in terms of uh, homemade spirits, uh, I know dozens of people who are doing homemade spirits. They're also, if you go to a place like uh, Alambica, they will have a bunch of other syrups if you don't want to make syrup. But syrups are really, really easy to make. You just put your water on the stove, you heat it up, you add in some sugar, and then you let it cool down. It sounds pretty easy. Yes, you know what's even easier? Just drinking what you bring me. Not that too. I'm going to have another sip of this. Um, Chris, what's going on with the Signature SAQ stores? The Signature, there, they, uh, which one? The Signature in Montreal closed. And there it's, uh, I'd like to think that it was uh, due to incompetence of the SAQ. And the more I think about it, yes, it is because they weren't able to, because they're clo- em- emptying out entirely uh, Les Ailes de la Mode. Yes. And so I think that there's obviously something happening there because to have that much retail space in downtown Montreal empty, somebody's got some shenanigans. Something went very wrong. But there. they're, uh, the, no, I think that the they have something in, in line for that, that there's something big is going to happen in that space. But okay. Les Ailes de la Mode never worked. That whole center never worked. I don't know why okay. it didn't work because the other ones right next to it yes. worked like mm-hmm. gangbusters. That one, for whatever reason, mm-hmm. became a dead zone. But they're the idea, and there they had signed a lease to move to, uh, which one, the new Ogilvy stuff a complex. Okay. However, for what, a year and a half, they can't figure find a space. They haven't tried to find a space. I have no idea. So signature's gone. No, but they're the thing to remember. If you call the signature in Quebec City, yeah, uh, give them your credit card number. They will deliver to your home for free. For free? Yes. Mm-hmm. Wait, wait a second. How have I never heard of this before? Uh, you didn't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you told us. I had no idea. Yes. So don't despair that Signature Downtown is closed. Mm-hmm. Just get online, yeah, get your credit anyth- card out. For anything that is a Signature exclusive, they ship anywhere in Quebec for free. Is there an alternative in Montreal if I if I can't go there or I don't feel like buying stuff online? Is there anything comparable? Uh, there, the the signature products have been sort of split between the SAQ at the Outwater Market and at 440 de Maisonneuve, which is sort of a corner of city councillors. I like that you know all this. I like that you know what's going on and that you keep us up to date on uh, the state of boozing in Montreal. I do my best. <laughs> Thank you to our man about town, Chris Hand, otherwise known as Zeke. Cheers. Cheers. One more sip of this sucker.